Welcome to Sunless Sea. This is a game about exploring the unknown and attempting to not go insane in the process. It's been an early access for quite a while, but it just finally got fully released. I've played it for about an hour so far just to get kind of familiar with the mechanics, because it's a fairly complex game, and I really like what I've seen. It's an incredibly richly detailed world, and the writing is just exceptional. So I can't wait to jump into it. If you'd like to play it for yourself, you can grab it from Steam and GOG and perhaps some other places. I'll have links to all of that in the description. Alright, so I've already got a game running, but let's just go ahead and start a new one. There is some random generation, by the way, and this game also has permadeath, so my new game is not going to be the same as my old one. Three decades ago, in the reign of Victoria, London was stolen by bats. Now it lies a mile below the surface. It was dreadfully inconvenient for everyone, but it opened a vast black ocean to you. Welcome to the Untersee. Alright, so there's a bunch of stuff on the screen. Don't worry about it too much at the moment. Let's just start by choosing who we... well, who we were, and who we want to be. Alright, let's see. Who were you? Now you're a captain. Now you belong to the Untersee. But who were you? Before. Alright, so I am going to be a veteran of the campaign of 68. You fought in the invasion of hell. London's armies lost. You survived. Your loot and your pension have bought you a command. Gives you a bonus to iron, the skill of causing direct damage. They will not trifle with you. You promised a job to your acquaintance, the Shady Cook. You'll do until you find someone less disgusting. Alright, so I get a bunch of stuff just to start off. Gained a bunch of iron. <laughs> Gained one times Shady Cook. Yay! Echo, which is the currency of this world, by the way. Echo is... Coin, I guess. You were a wary soldier. Now you're a Z-Captain. Alright. So, what is my winning condition? So it could either be that my father was lost at Z, you never knew him, but you've often dreamed of him, find and return his remains to London for a decent burial. Or, gather a hundred tales, learn all you can of the Z, write a masterpiece, retire. Or, be rich. So, my father's bones, basically write amazing tales about my journeys, or become filthy, stinking rich. I want to write about amazing journeys, so let's go with that. Alright, so my ambition is now to become London's most venerated explorer. Alright, then I get to choose how I want to be addressed. Let's go with Captain. And then finally, get to choose my portrait, and I get to choose my name. So I'm going to go with Abner Marsh, named after the riverboat captain who goes up and down the Mississippi from the novel Fever Dream by George R.R. R. Martin. Most people, of course, know him from making Game of Thrones, but before that, he actually made Fever Dream, which is definitely not as well known as his later work, but it was a really, really good book. And I just thought the name would be absolutely perfect. So all the qualities I just chose about Abner Marsh are kind of sort of trying to roleplay his character a little bit. Because in the books, he was a very... Um, he was a very direct, kind of simple person. He's the sort of person who would solve things using just raw strength. Definitely not a poet. He's uh, a bit of a romantic. A very, a very blunt romantic. It's a strange combination, but yeah. All right, so here we go. Let's see. So here are my lodgings. There's a bunch of stuff we can do. It's probably going to take a little bit of time to get used to how this whole UI works. It's still a little bit strange to me. There's just kind of like buttons and icons absolutely everywhere. But basically these, just to give you a quick overview. So these tabs here are basically for like managing your, your stuff. Like, here you can, like, buy other boats and purchase stuff at the shops and uh, move around your officers. Like, I could take the cook off duty, for example. Stuff like that. 
So this is kind of like all management stuff, and the story tab is kind of your main uh, way to progress in, well, the story. So this is where you advance the story, and these other tabs are basically where you manage all your stuff. So for now, let's just see what I can do here in London. See what kind of story stuff I can get into. Oh yes, that's right, when you first start out, you get this kind of tutorial book, which tells you all sorts of stuff about how to play the game. However, one really cool thing about it is that if you read all the way to the end, you can actually sell the tutorial book. You're a veteran captain and require no more advice? Very well, then. Gets rid of the book and gets you plus 50 Echo, which is actually a lot of money, at least in the beginning stages. All right, so back to my lodgings. Here you may catch up with your correspondence, rest, or retire altogether from seafaring life. The better your lodgings, the better the quality of your retirement. Naturally. I can do all sorts of stuff here. Once I get more money, I could even purchase a better place. A townhouse. I can rest. I can't at the moment, because there's actually no need to. But I could, later on. In fact, you can even write a will. All sorts of stuff, but most of these require... A lot more um, resources than I have at the moment, so for the moment, let's just read the morning papers. Which gives me recent news, which is a quality that actually seems surprisingly important. So basically, if you get recent news, and you go visit another island, you can actually deliver the recent news to the island. Which can be very helpful. Let's see, what's going on? News from abroad. The Canate is threatening war. They always are. London's colonies on the Carnelian coast want independence. They always do. The Untersee, the papers report, has undergone another alteration. Not yet it hasn't. You'd know. Oh! A promotional coupon from Mrs. Plenty's Provisioners for a half cask of salt herring. You could use that. Ooh! They actually gained me a supply. I guess from the coupon. Sweet. Right, so now I have recent news, which I can spread around. Cool. Alright, so let's actually visit London itself. All sorts of stuff we can do here. So the Admiralty's Survey Office. This is a very important place. They'll pay for information from Z captains. Find out what and how. So basically, one of the main ways that you can make money in this game is by, well, simply exploring. Like I said, it's really a game about exploring. And in fact, if I open up the map... Yeah, look at this. That's me. This tiny little dot. This tiny little beacon of light in this massive dark sea. That's me. And the location of the islands that you find are at least semi-randomized each game. So, there's a lot to explore. And to aid your exploration... The Admiralty's survey office actually wants you to explore. So if you go to a new place and you dock there, you can take what's called a... Uh, what is it called? A survey report? Port, uh, oh, it's called a port report. And if you bring those port reports back to the Admiralty's survey office, they'll actually pay you for them. So basically you get paid simply for exploring. Of course, it's not the only way to make money. All sorts of other things you can do. Buy trade goods, complete quests, you can uh, blow up other ships and take their supplies and stuff like that. But exploration is pretty much directly rewarded, which is pretty cool. Let's see. Let's ask them if there's, if there's anything in particular that they need me to look for. Uh, let's see. Retrieve strategic information from the Iron and Misery Company funging station somewhere not far from home waters. Oh, yeah, I remember that place from when I first played. It is pretty, pretty nearby. Although its location has probably changed from where I encountered it before. Alright, so they want me to do something specific. I don't know if that means they pay me more because they're asking me to do something specific. Or what, but uh, I guess it can't hurt to have a specific quest to go there. Let's see. Visit the university, can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. I could hire on more crew. Let's see. So I've got 8 out of 10 crew. And at the moment... Uh, officers. As you can see, I don't really have a lot of people here. I have me, the captain, a cook, and 
A comatose ferret mascot. <laughs> I'm just going to let that sink in a, for a minute. A comatose ferret mascot. Because why not? Don't have a first officer, don't have an engineer, don't have a gunnery officer, don't have a surgeon. If somebody gets an infection, well, sorry. Gonna have to lop it off. So maybe I should hire people. I don't know. Sure, let's give it a shot. So what is it going to cost? It's going to cost 30 Echo. Hmm. Do I want to do that? You know, I don't think I actually have to. No, because I can actually just, like, look for people that want to come without having to, like, pay money, I think. The only thing I need is a... I'm not even quite sure what that is. You need another day a new recruit, but I remember at some point I came back here and I was able to do this, and I don't think it cost me quite as much. And I'm not desperate for crew, so let's just leave it. And I can also do this tomb colonist quest. Basically, they want to be transported to vendor bite. But let's not do that yet, because I don't think I'm going to be heading straight there. Let's just go exploring, shall we? I think we're just... Ready to go. Let's launch. Alright, so this is my boat. It has a gun. It has very few staff members. It can go forwards. It can go backwards. I could even turn. It's a very nice quality for a boat to have. Discovered something's abyss. 50 fragments gained. Nice. You might wonder what fragments are used for. I don't remember. Used for stuff. But, uh, yeah, there's some pretty simple controls just to explore. Just WASD. Forwards and backwards. As you go, it does use up fuel, as you can see up here. If this runs out, I'm pretty much screwed. And as it turns out, having your light on actually takes up a significant amount of fuel. So it's actually better to have it off. Although, if you have the light off, the fear... The, the terror of the people on board is going to go up. Whereas if I do this, it won't. So it's kind of a mixture of do I want to eat up more fuel or do I want my people to become more terrified? And terror is something that can definitely be a problem. Let's go ahead and put in at Hunter's Keep. Just going to swing around here to the dock. Gonna thread the needle and be dangerous? Yeah. Let's see what's going on at Hunter's Keep. A hump of dark rock swathed in mist, like a hundred other Untersee Islands. But here's a grand house, windows aglow. Lawns, impossibly green and lush in the false starlight. Raked gravel paths. You stand on the dock as the sea nudges the ship's sides. An unexpectedly warm breeze carries the faintest trace of lavender. So there's usually a bunch of different things that you can do when you come into a place. Present yourself to the house, walk in the gardens, reconnoiter the island. You can even spy. Although, I only have a 75% chance of success, so I don't think it's worth it. Let's just go to the house. A maid with smoldering topaz eyes shows you into the parlor, where three young women wait. A visitor! The youngest cries. The next youngest chuckles. The eldest sighs. Do excuse the indecorum, she says. Visitors are rare. You are very welcome. I'm Cynthia. The noisy one is Phoebe. The cheerful one is Lucy. You're in good time for lunch. Will you join us? Of course. Alright, I remember I remember this from when I played before. So the three different sisters, I can talk to each one. But I can only talk to one at one time. And then they kind of like go back to sleep and don't want to talk to me anymore. 
so I kind of have to choose which one I want to talk to. And then the rest I don't actually get a chance to talk to. At least not during this visit. Maybe if you come back later you can talk to them? But, I think before I did Phoebe and Lucy, I never did Cynthia, so let's actually start with Cynthia just to change things up for me. Cynthia grasps your arm and whispers to you. Her eyes are wide and blue, her hair is wild and tangled. Bats might nest in it. It seems to you that you're sitting on a hillside above a wide blue lake, listening to a story of a murder, an axe, a net. Blood on scented water. Another chop? Cynthia asks. You've barely touched your food. Here, I'll have the maid wrap something up for you. You can't be hungry. It's not safe to be hungry. Uh -huh. It's not safe to be hungry? What do you mean? This is kind of just a summary of everything that happened. I now have plus one tale of terror. Yay! I've also gained terror, so not only do I have a tail, but I'm afraid. And a little bit of supplies. Cool. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so all the sisters have kind of like gone back inside. The parlor is empty. Where are the sisters? The maid makes it clear, through a series of unwelcoming growls, that Phoebe, Lucy, and Cynthia are all three indisposed. No lunch today, apparently. However, even when the sisters aren't feeling sociable, they can be tempted out of their lair by the smell of news stories. So the fact that I actually have current news means that I can tempt them back out and have lunch with one more. You ask the sulfur-eyed maid to carry a few hints of your news to the sisters. Oddly enough, she comes back with a message that their headaches are cured and you're invited to lunch. Okay, which one? Oh, so I can actually have lunch with Cynthia again. Interesting. What happens if you have lunch with the same one twice in a row? Let's let's try it and find out, shall we? Oh, it's the same thing, isn't it? It is the same thing. So I've gained yet another tale of terror, and my terror is even higher. Sweet. Okay, unfortunately, though, I used up all my current uh, recent news, so can't do that again. Let's examine the island and see if we can find anything else. Ships rarely come here. Nothing changes, even the weather. The house is the heart of the isle. The house and the sisters. But the Admiralty may, ha may be happy to know that nothing's changed, at least. All right, just gained a port report, so I can now take that back to the Admiralty's office and get paid for it. And I think that's all there is to do here. So no shops available on this island, no shipyard. Yeah, time to cast off. All right, and one of the things I have, by the way, is the Z-Bat, which is this thing. It's a, a Batarang or something. There are no islands within the Z-Bats range. So yeah, this thing allows you to find any islands that are at least relatively close to you. And it tells you their rough direction. Um, where was I supposed to go? I had a quest that the Admiralty's office wanted me to visit. Where was that? The Iron and Misery Company Funging Station. Okay, so it just says it's nearby, but it doesn't say where. So, let's go this way. Why not? Turn off the lights. Oh, these are actually the tomb colonies up here. So this is actually where I would want to take the tomb colonists. Now I kind of wish I took them on board. Also, I think that boat to my left is a pirate boat. I think they would try to attack me, so I want to stay away from them. Alright, so I can dock here. What is this? It's a light ship. Are there people on board? 
Ah, there are. They long for news of home. Ah, I'm afraid I don't have any. They have some fuel to spare, but it's twice the usual price. That is not worth it. Alright, I'm just going to take off. Thank you, though. Alright. I am actually going to go back. And let's grab the tomb colonists. And we can also turn in that port report. The music is wonderful. And it's a really good looking game too. As you can see, though, my terror is going up significantly. Because of the fact that I have my lights off. Now it's at 7. So I think we're okay now that we're in home waters and kind of near lights. Yeah, it looks like it's going down. Okay, uh, a bunch of new stuff. Hello. The Revenue Men. Her Enduring Majesty's Customs Service works closely with both the Ministry of Public Decency and the Masters of the Bazaar. Today they've selected you for an inspection. Don't cheek them. Okay, so I can just let them examine my ship. Get rid of any controlled goods, or talk my way out of it. Well, I don't have anything to hide, so come aboard. They roam your deck like wolves. They tear through your belongings like termites. At last, they leave. They found nothing. Alright, what's going on? Collect messages from the Harper Master. All the clatter and songs of the dockside. It soothes the soul. Are there messages for you? Apparently a bunch. And yeah, there's kind of like a constant onslaught of icons showing up, and to be honest, I don't know what all of them mean. And they're kind of overwhelming, and I feel like the information that's presented to you is kind of jumbled up in a weird way. Like, I never know where I'm supposed to look. I think this is like, these are the most important new things here on the right of the screen. I think... I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so the stuff on the right of the screen is basically the stuff that's here as well. Okay. So, um, let's turn in my port report first. If I can remember how to do that. We go to London, and then, oh, here we go. Here we go. I trust the sisters are keeping well. They are citizens of her enduring majesty. Notionally. There we go. Gained one fuel. Gained a little bit of favor. And gained a little bit of money. Not much, but it's something. Okay. Now what is going on? An urchin tugs your sleeve. Governor wants a word. A brooding figure waits at the lamplight's edge. I have need of a reliable agent. Failing that, an inventive one. Here are my requirements. Hmm? He has very specific needs, but he'll pay much better than market rates. And he won't ask how you came by these things. Okay, so he doesn't mind if they're black market goods. Alright, what do you want? So he has a couple of requests. Something intricate. Find them in buried treasure, broken museums, pirate cargoes. Now and then, the stomach of monsters. Good luck. I need seven. Don't ask why. 1500 echoes will answer all your questions. Okay, so he wants seven outlandish artifacts. And this one is seven bales of parabola linen. 
Well, unfortunately, I have neither. So, sorry, can't help you, buddy. <laughs> you look like a, a lovely person with that knife. Is that how you greet people normally? A very fine evening to you, Captain. My, what you might call a... My, what you might call a mentor is very fond of adventurous Z captains, and he would like to offer you what you might call a dispensation. On account of he is so fond of Z captains. Behind the blind bruiser, on the dock, stands a... stands a dray piled high with fuel and supplies. I can accept the dispensation. Or ask for... Who is this patron and why are you giving me these free supplies? Or just flat out refuse. Well, this is this is shady as hell, so I'm going to say what is going on. He runs a very fine and very liberal establishment just across the river. What's much patronized by sailors and by men of wit and vinegar. A public house. And there's no obligation to speak of. My patron would hope only that you might remember him kindly. And I suppose that if the opportunity should arise for you to return his kindness then I do not imagine he would refuse your offer. I see. So butter me up in the hope that I might feel obligated to do something shady in the future? Hmm. Now I happen to know that if I deal with shady people like him and accept their offers, it's going to raise my suspicion. Well, apparently there's no strings attached, right? What could go wrong? I'll take it. Well, my patron hopes that you find these little gifts to your liking, and he expects that perhaps, someday, you might choose to call on him at the Medusa's head. Should that day come, we'll make you very welcome, and give you any safe conduct which you might require. Good evening to you. He salutes and is gone. All right, my suspicion has just been raised. However, I've just gained 10 fuel and 5 supplies, which is really good. Because I believe fuel here, if I remember right, who sells it? Yeah, so fuel actually costs 10 echo. So 10 fuel is 100 echo worth, which means he just gave me, he just gave me supplies equaling more than my total amount of, of money. So it's actually really, really good. All right, what else? Oh yes, more news. The Echo Bazaar, the enigmatic marketplace, has increased its tax on love stories. The traitor empress has forbidden singing in the street outside her palace. The anarchists of the Calendar Council have inexplicably dynamited a drinking fountain. The Ministry of Public Decency has located and destroyed a nest of gallbladder wasps. That seems to have calmed me down a little bit. Lost one terror. Let's see. Anything else? So now that I have a day free, I can just spend a night on the town, spend a little bit of money. A little bit of chance of something bad happening. Might get mugged or something, but uh, it would reduce my terror. Don't really need to, though. Okay, so let's take on the tomb colonists. And... Immigrant will pay to be taken north to Venderbite. Did I say immigrant? Emigrant. Different words. Emigrant. It's oddly difficult to die and fall in London, but when a Londoner is too tatty and wretched to live, they wrap themselves in bandages and take ship for the tomb colonies. Your crew cart these, cart these ones aboard in padded coffins. They'll sleep there until the journey is done. The tomb colonist is in your hold, Take them north to the colony of Venderbite and sell them there. So... It almost sounds like they're zombies. It kind of sounds like they're zombies, but I guess they're just near death, so they wrap themselves in bandages and act like a mummy? I don't even know. But, um... Yeah, we got mummy people on board. Cool. Okay, so now I can take a look for new recruits. So, what's going on? Who do we have? A first officer who increases in mirrors and pages. I have no idea what mirrors are. Uh, 
Let's see. So we have an officer, an officer, and a zailer. Oh, so that one will just increase my crew by one, of which I have 8 out of 10. Costs a little bit of money, but not much. Just 5 echo. That's 50 echo. It's pretty expensive. Also 50. Um, let's just grab another crew member. There we go. I don't really know what that actually does. I'm assuming it, like, makes your ship go faster, maybe? And, uh, they probably eat more supplies? I have no idea. There's got to be a reason you'd want crew, though. They must make things faster in some way or something. I mean, you do need crew to run a ship, obviously. Kind of important. Okay, I think that's it. Alright. Let's go ahead and set off here, and let's go to Venderbite. Which should be straight north. And you know what? Let's go see if we can fight that ship that I saw up there. Just to show you the combat a little bit. The combat system is actually pretty cool. I mean, I have very limited experience with it, but from what I've seen, it's actually pretty cool. I remember a little while ago, they actually did a total revamp of the combat system. Apparently, the combat was one of the worst parts about this game, but now that, now that they've redone it, apparently it's pretty good. Get creeped out if I leave the lights off for too long. Alright, so yeah, I think they're gonna... Yep, here we go. Alright. Keep them in, right in front of me. Wait for this to charge, and then shoot. And... This should put them out. There we go. And there we go. So yeah, just to explain a little bit about how this works. Just pause the game right here, by the way. You can pause it at any moment. This kind of arc that you see just shows your... Uh, range that the enemy needs to be inside of. So the enemy needs to be inside of this arc if you want to actually be able to shoot them. And then when they're inside of that arc, your crew will basically start charging up the gun. Which is what this is. That little green bar that was popping up around this thing was them charging the gun. And once it's charged, you simply have to click it and then you shoot. Now of course there must be more to the combat than just that, especially in the future. At the moment, it's pretty much just that simple, but I also know that if you have the light on, and if you keep the enemy ship inside of your light beam, um, your gun will actually charge faster. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and gather these supplies. Usually these little ships don't drop much. Let's see. I have a cache of curiosities. Let's open that up and see what's inside. Uh, found a bolt of spider silk. Okay. Cool. Let's see if my Z-Bat returns something. Venerbite is some distance to the north. Oh, here it is. and discover this little place out here while we're here. Uh, is this not going to register? Oh, there we go. And look at that! There's some sort of giant crab creature. Yeah, this game has some strange enemies lurking in the waters. I don't even know if it's dangerous, but I'm just going to assume it is, and I'm not going to go near it. And we made it to Venderbite. The trouble with tomb colonists. You've brought this decaying emigrant north. Now what? One last fight. Your passenger has been drinking. Ahoy! She chortles. Defend yourself! She launches a tipsy assault. 
Her crew hang back, chuckling. Thanks, crew. A straightforward challenge. Your iron qualities gives you a 100% chance of success. Thank God I was a past soldier. Yeah, because my past is as a soldier, that unlocks my ability to be really freaking awesome at fighting, apparently. Ain't gonna get the best of me, you bandaged drunkard. Mum, you mummy, m mummy woman. Sorry, that's my best insult. Tomb colonists have a lifetime of bitter experience. Some of them are the deadliest combatants under the earth. And possibly this one is when she hasn't drunk quite so much rum. You'll never know. She salutes you, laughing, after you disarm her. Good fight, she opines. And then she staggers backwards and falls over the side. You never do find out what happened to her. But at least you have her rather magnificent cavalry saber. And her belongings. Uh, I feel kind of bad now. So she fell into the water? <laughs> she fell into the water and I just get all of her stuff? Um, you know, people drown. People drown when they're not drunk. I suppose if you're drunk, the chance of drowning is probably a lot higher, isn't it? Uh-oh. Gained some iron. Lost a tomb colonist. Got a couple supplies. He brought a tomb colonist to Vendor Bite and defeated them in an unexpected duel. And now I have an outlandish artifact, of which I need six more to fulfill that one quest that the merchant wanted back at London. That would be the Magnificent Cavalry Saber, I think. The outlandish artifact. Cool. On deck, you can hear the sound that a thousand bandaged dead make as they shuffle and cough. It's something like the world's most restless concert audience, or the world's most plague-ridden cathedral. Ugh. This place looks really big. I mean, you saw how long it took me just to get around to the dock. Like, this place looks as big as London. What do they have? Like, shops? Yeah, they got three shops. Looks like you can buy a ship. Alright, so what's going on? Whatever that is, I can't do it. I can explore, visit the first curator. What's that? Z captains, the first curator gives audience. The first curators are responsible for the preservation of the tomb colonies. It has been here much longer than London, like all the like all the oldest tomb colonists. But even tomb colonists dissolve in the end. Its time is close. Hmm. Let's go. No more light, the obsequious steward cautions you. The curator is terribly afraid of moths. He opens the door, and you step into near darkness. A pair of luminous lamplighter bees buzz in a latticed ivory tube. There is no other source of light. A bandaged shape no larger than a child lies crumpled on a couch. It lifts its head with obvious effort. It takes several seconds for you to distinguish its voice from the soft buzz of the bees. Oh god. Alright, it looks like I can, I can ask a bunch of things. Um, let's see. Uh, let's listen to a whispered request. Z, Captain. Silkskin, not much left of me. I will go into the Grand Sanatorium. Bring me colors. Seven colors. Pay well. Seven colors. Cosmogon, Erigo, Pelagon. Or, pe yeah, Pelagon. Stuart has list. Find them here and there across the wide black sea. Those are colors? I have no idea what they are. Pelagon? Erigo? Okay, I guess I'll accept. I don't see much of a reason not to. I mean, if I come across the stuff, great. If I don't, oh well. Tell me about this grand sanatorium that you say you're going to go to. 
Is that like the tomb colonists heaven? A long, low chuckling. Oh, Silkskin. You don't want to know. The chuckling becomes a cough. We don't die here below. Not unless we go to Z. So we needed something else. Somewhere to end. Ah. Okay, I'll take the commission. Thank you. This poor flesh thirsts for colors. No more words. It collapses, rustling back onto the couch. Even the effort of speaking seems to have diminished it a little. The audience is over. As the door opens, it shrinks from the finger of light that reaches across the floor. Outside, the obsequious steward nods. The book? Yes, the book. He hands you a slim, illustrated volume. The curator is old. Old as dust. We will all be grateful if you do the if you do it this one last favor. Oh my god, that just gave me a bunch of stuff. A page from the Neathbo Pelican. Okay, so these are all about the different colors. Interesting. Let's go ahead and gather gossip. Let's put together our port report. Who's plotting what out in the tomb colonies? Along the coasts of the Untersee, it's remarkably hard to die. The decrepit and nearly dead who leave London become tomb colonists, and settle here in bandaged peace. But they don't give up their ties to home, or their politics. You gather a hall of complex clues, enough to keep your contacts in London interested. Sweet. Take that back to the Admiralty's office. Alright, already been there. I haven't explored yet. A dusty glass of wine. No thanks. Alright, so I can either explore or... The Last Tour Operator. Ho, Captain! I have one dozen sad and bandaged souls here. They're choosing their final fate. Will you take them on one last diversionary tour? It may be a longish trip. Make sure you have enough supplies. This will replace 12 supplies with 12 tomb colonists, who you'll need to take to three destinations in the Untersee. Um, no. It'll replace 12 supplies with 12 tomb colonists. I only have 13 supplies. <laughs> that would leave me with, like, two loaves of bread to feed my entire crew for a month. Not gonna happen. Let's explore. Here they favor candlelight over gaslight. The shadows are... swagged like cobwebs. The tomb colonists stand still enough to be mistaken for sculpture. Until they laugh or cough. One building in three seems abandoned. What a strange place. I love the world building in this game, it's so strong. A raggedy fellow. Captain, I'm a good seaman. I'm yours if you'll have me. Will you have me? I'm hungry. I'll work hard. He seems likely enough. If a little ragged and sorrowful. Hmm. Are you a generic crew member? <laughs> Strangers are too chancy. You've heard stories about things in the shape of sailors. Or you just don't like his face. I can pay his passage home for 250 echoes. Ain't rich enough for that. Yeah, I'll take you on. Come aboard. You won't be sorry. I'll work double watches. Ask anyone, they'll tell you I have a good name. Yes. Yes, eventually you'll get him to stop talking. His enthusiasm is promising. If a little pitiable. Alright, I've maxed out my crew. At least, I think I've maxed out my generic crew. I believe I can probably still take on, like, specialized officers. 
Yeah, because I think that's a separate thing. A skilled crewman. And this is a Zaylor who came begging to you for a berth. He's done good work, this one. But he's keeping a little shrine to the salt. The nameless god of the horizon, at the back of the hold. Hmm. A shrine to the salt, the nameless god of the horizon, at the back of the hold. What? But, if it's a shrine to the salt, how is it a nameless god? It sounds like its name is, well, salt. I don't understand. Hmm. Hmm, do I permit it or forbid it? I mean, eh, I don't mind. What's the worst that could happen? It's only gonna probably encourage crazy demons to come for our souls. Act like a beacon out in the dark, saying, come to me. Yeah, you can keep it. A breath of air. You let him keep his salt circle and his chalked arrow. That night, as you stand on the foredeck, a soft breeze comes out of the east, the salt's direction. Tussles your hair, passes. Hmm. You've gained one, the gods of the Z, salt's attention. Oh god, does that mean a god is now keeping its eye on me? It's watching? Is that a good thing? Do I have the gods' favor, or... What? I don't even know. Okay, already explored, got my port report. Visited the first curator and got his quest. Oh my god, look at all these curiosities. Ooh, look at all these descriptions. Irigo. Eyes for Irigo. No one remembers why. Irigo colors the forgotten corners of home. G is lost in Gant, which remains when all other colors are eaten. Gant can be found where shadows are myriad. How strange. Sea lights Cosmogon, the color of remembered suns. The fecund. The... How do you pronounce that? F faded? Foded? The fungal. These flourish in the glow of Cosmogon. It's amazing how much detail there is in this world. It's, it just feels like such a complete world, you know? Like it's... Like everything has just been fully developed. It feels like it's real. It's not like some sort of superficial thing. Because, you know, I mean... Like, th for example, these things. So these are colors. And they all have strange names. They're not just like yellow and orange and stuff like that. And it'd be easy to just change the name of the colors and make them sound different. You know, you, you see this sometimes. This kind of reskinning of common things where they just take something that already exists and we're already familiar with it and they just change the name. And tr just to try to make it sound kind of exotic. To make it sound like it belongs to a, a different time, a different place. But sometimes it's just a superficial change like that. It's just a change in name and otherwise it's exactly the same. But look at how much detail they go into. There's even a description for where the strange name comes from and what it represents. For each individual color. It's incredible. It really just feels like so much love has been put into the, the story of the world, the universe, and just filling it all out and making it feel consistent. It's awesome. Alright, so what are my objectives? Seven outlandish artifacts, that's right. Tomb colonists. For some reason, that's still an objective. It says, just what precisely is their problem? I'm not sure what that's suggesting I do. Maybe that's related to the color quest? Let's get information from the Iron and Misery Company. Funging, funging station? Funging station? Okay. Ooh, yeah. Salt's attention. It's watching you. If it even exists. Ugh. 
<laughs> given what I've seen so far, which is not very much, but even from what I've seen so far, it probably does exist. Alright, well, I think it's about time to end the episode, but before that, let's talk to my crew. Let's speak to the comatose ferret mascot. Play with your ferret. A weary roll of the eye. Play, that eye roll says. Play. I played once in the happy warrens of London before you installed me in this floating coffin and made me eat dried food. Damn your play. It's an eloquent eye roll. I guess life at sea would be pretty crappy. Not only for people, but for animals, too. I'm sorry, comatose ferret. You can go back to being comatose. It lies across your desk like a lumpy scarf. Ferrets are rather tubular, aren't they? Like a freaking sausage. A sausage with feet. And a nose. Hmm. But are ferrets a strange sausage, or are sausages strange ferrets? Hmm. Let's speak to my cook. What you want? He might say more, but a coughing fit takes him. Eventually he straightens up and wipes his mouth. Slowly, with his forearm. The shady cook is not the most hygienic of officers. But he'll do until you find someone better. I don't know if he will do. He's the freaking cook. If anybody should be hygienic, it's the freaking cook. Otherwise, my entire crew is going to be out of commission due to food poisoning or something nasty. Also, it sounds like he's chewing on, like, a massive wad of tobacco or something. He doesn't appear capable of speaking. Like, what does this even say? Varagurgurgur? What? What does this do? Increase your hearts. Unlocked with a secret. I have a secret. Wait, when did I get a secret? Cool, I'll take it. I just don't remember when I got it. Uh. Why did the Shady Cook choose to go to Z? What do you want from life? For. He looks you directly in the eyes. Soul. He repeats it, more slowly. Sea of Lilies. He licks his lip. His lips, very slowly. Eventually, you have to look away. The Sea of Lilies is somewhere in the East Central Untersea. East Central Untersea, that's really far away. East Central, I mean, think about it. This is what I've explored so far, so East Central is like... here. I guess if I keep him on board and maybe find my way, my way over there, some special story thing could happen. Not gonna happen anytime soon, though. Alright, so I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. I think that gives you a pretty good kind of overview of how the game works. Going from port to port, collecting reports. So that you can report back to the Admiralty's office. And why is that boat on shore? What in the hell is happening? We need to investigate for science here. And it, it just disappeared. Welp. It's the Untersee. What can I say? It's a strange place. Now, what the hell was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, I think this gives you a pretty good overview of how everything works. Go from port to port to basically explore stuff, see what kind of interesting story stuff you can get into, and what kind of trouble you can drum up, and what kind of horrible things you can have happen. Keep uh, fuel in the engines, and keep food on board so people don't starve. Try not to go insane and lose your mind. And, uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. I guess when you look at it really simply, it's not really that complex of a game. But I think it just kind of feels complex because of all the little icons for all the different kind of story stuff you can do. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty good overview. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I will definitely be back soon.